Hello and welcome to this, the Books Crypto Club weekly catch up on Zoom. It is Sunday, the 8th of January 2023. And if you're a beginner in the crypto space and getting baffled by all these terms, then stick around and see what we talk about today. If you're somebody who's more experienced or would like to talk about project in some way, come along and listen to what we're talking about this week. We hold these sessions every Sunday, they're recorded live at 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. UK time. So come along and join us. There's um, a link to the events below. The sessions are open to everybody, novices and experts alike. And the whole idea is that it's an opportunity for beginners to ask questions, for more experienced people to talk about projects that we're working on, whatever really to do with the crypto space. We talk about NFTs, DeFi, cryptocurrencies, crypto assets, crypto custody. We talk about various projects that are happening. We uh, discuss what's in the news about what's in the crypto space with the exchanges. Sometimes we might talk about crypto wallets and the, the options that are available there and how actually blockchains work as well. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, do click on the subscribe, do, do click on the like, make comments in the YouTube channel. Even better, come along to a future session. Anyway, with that, let's see who's going to come join us today. Hey, John. Hello. I can see your lips moving. I can't hear you. I think it's okay at my end. There we go. There we hey. go. There we go. There we go. That's better. A little, little better. How's it going? Not too bad. You know, not too bad today. You busy commuting you? somewhere? I'm, I'm good. You busy walking somewhere? Yeah, I thought, you know, I'll uh, um, put it on mute and take myself on video and see what this is all about for the first time. Cool. Okay. Well, we, we never really know what's going to happen with these kind of things because sometimes, okay. so sometimes we get lots of people showing up. Other weeks, it's just a one-to-one. -one. It, it really can vary. Um, so we, we just open it up and we see what happens. <laughs> so so what, what, what brings you along? Anything in particular in the crypto? world yeah i've just been uh, using crypto for eight years all over the world trading commodities so uh, james bowater thought it would be interesting to come into the group i've known him for a while i work yep. in lebanon russia cuba um argentina now i'm in brazil and i'm i'm the closed currency nut so uh, my whole thing is you know to, to to make money in crypto don't buy crypto use it yeah, <laughs> you know, we use it. So, uh, you know, I just, uh, you know, buy food and, and ship it to the US or I'm in Brazil shipping stuff to Russia. Okay. And uh, I pay with crypto because no one wants uh, the people I work with will take it and I get cash and I don't have to deal with a lot of the uh, middlemen. But it's just kind of my secret sauce. I've been doing so, it for years. So, so talk me through some of that because you, you're one of the few people who's actually actively using crypto for what it was intended, which, which, uh -huh. which is to, which is to, you know, transfer value and buy and sell things do you use particular platforms or particular products to do things or do you just work with certain companies who are crypto friendly you know kind of all of the above i mean let's take argentina um you know if i need a hundred or a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of local cash i'll go to the the local kiosk, the money exchange groups that i know um whatever they want whether it's bitcoin us bt um, ether, whatever, I'll send it to them and they'll give me the cash. It's as simple as that. And okay. I have these little, I have these exchange, exchange houses all over the world that I basically found online. And, um, you know, so I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying, you know, buy crypto and hold crypto, you know, I'm using it to essentially get money to my local suppliers, whether it's, um, beef and in beef that i need to ship out of argentina or brazil the cashews up in the north or in lebanon you know okay. uh, they'll take they'll take crypto all day long um and it's not it doesn't affect me if it goes up or down because it's a same day yeah such trade situation for me um you know if if they want to hold on to it meaning the exchange houses that's their problem, not mine. I just need the local currency so I could pay for this stuff and get sure. it moved. Okay. I'd, I'd like to chat about that a bit more in a minute, actually, because that's really interesting. And I think a lot of people watching will find that good. I just want to say hello to Matthew, who's joined us, and to Elena as well. So ha happy New Year to you both, and ha hello and welcome back. Hello, happy New Year. Looking forward <laughs> to the next year with cool. you. 
<laughs> so we're just talking with John here. He's talking about how he's active in Argentina and Lebanon and various other countries. And he's one of the few people who's actually using crypto to buy and sell things, which is awesome because people seem to think that the whole idea of crypto is you just buy it and you keep it. <laughs> so, uh, and, and Ma 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 Matthew, can you come off mute and say hi as well? <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm staying with a buddy here in London. Um, been flying all over the place. Been down in Dubai. Very, very exciting down there. Working and collaborating uh, in the Emirates Towers with some great developers. And yeah, I'm all in that space. My first time jumping in with you guys. I only joined up there a few weeks ago. Brilliant. Well, this is the first time that John's joined us as well, so don't, don't worry, don't feel embarrassed. Um, Elena has been on this group for uh, several years, I would guess now, because it, it must be last year and possibly before. Yes. Uh, but yeah, no problem. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so Matthew, thanks for joining us. And yeah, Dubai's got loads of stuff going, because I noticed um, that I think... Um, is it Swissball got some people out there at the moment and there's some things going on? And between Dubai and at the moment, I guess, Davos, group with the World Economic Forum, every, everyone seems to be out there at the moment. So th thanks for joining us. Pleasure. And J J John, I just want to talk back to you. J just tell us a little bit more, because you're saying about you, you're obviously using it in Argentina. And I know that Argentina is pretty receptive um, to crypto. How, how are you finding it? You mentioned Lebanon before. Are they, are they similar? Yeah, you know, it is. I mean, you know, most people run when they hear of countries that have economic and monetary problems. I, I run, but I run to them because <laughs> that is where the, where the opportunity is. And, um, you know, you just look at um, when when times are good and everybody's just sitting around, you know, crypto is easy. I like going around the world where crypto is hard, where money is hard. Believe me, these people, when they want to make a buck, they have figured everything out much better than you and I will ever do. You know, when there's, ad when there's an adversary relationship to banks and currency and inflation, this is where crypto comes in. Now, again, I use it. I don't buy it. So I can go down to Argentina and basically pay for my beef shipments to Russia, um, transferring crypto into the hands of the local kiosk or the money exchange houses. I tell them way beforehand what I'm going to do, and they can arrange up to three, four, five hundred thousand dollars at a time for me. Cash, cash. And so, so that allows me to pay for things. So were you doing transactions with Russia? Because I seem to remember R Russia keeps announcing that they're about to make some decisions about the legitimacy of crypto uh, and this kind of thing. Uh, have you already converted it into fiat by that point? Yes. So, I mean, Russia's a very tricky situation because of the U.S. Treasury Department, yeah. um, because of, of many things like that. So, um I have to really outline what I'm doing. And since I'm in the food business and I'm supplying food, the UN charter and resolution specifically states that any dealings in food is outside the scope of the uh, essentially, you know, the um, embargoes the, 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 and, the and sanctions. The sanctions yeah. And, yeah. Yes. So I'm in Moscow, you know, five or six times a year. I've been in Moscow for 30 years. So, this is nothing new for me. I've actually seen worse over there. And anybody, anybody that uh, heard me in the beginning of the year, I was saying, listen, the ruble's going to be stronger. The ruble's going to be much better. It, it, it'll be great to, to do business. And it has. I mean, it really has. Now, the mere payment system is going to be very interesting. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I've, I've heard about Mir. Is that, the, is that kind of the equivalent of a central digital currency in some way? You know what? It's really the equivalent of a Visa, MasterCard, American Express. It's basically utilizing, you know, the digital rail. Well, how it's been probed, as you know, Russia has incredible, brilliant programmers. I mean, the founder of Google was born in Russia. There's just something mm -hmm. about their mathematics and their ability yep. to solve problems are uh, uh, just incredible. So, they figured out through the mere payment system how to make cross-border payments and transfers much cheaper, much easier, and much easier to look at and deal with. So 
um, the Treasury Department actually banned Mir around the world from utilizing that as part of the sanctions. But one day that's going to open up again. And once that thing unleashes around the world, I think Visa, MasterCard, American Express is going to have a huge run for their money because India, China, all the BRICS companies, countries have pledged to use it immediately. And the banks have all signed agreements with them. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you something. Would you want to be on the side of a group of countries that have, you know, five billion people or on the side of somebody that doesn't even have a billion people? It's all yeah. about transactions. You know? uh, uh, and that's what I found interesting when I saw that India had signed on that, because all of a sudden you've got a country with, what is it, 1.4 billion people now and growing, um, al aligning with um, Russia and some of the, the other regions and that. So, yeah, it, it sounds phenomenal. And I think you're right about there is something fascinating about um, Russia, I, I guess Belarus as well with uh, Elena Behar and some of the other former states in that area. The, the mathematics is just a different level. The, there's something in the water in that region, I think, that um, I, I always find it fascinating that they've, they've always got an edge. Uh, yeah, that, but, certainly. And especially institutions like Skolkovo in Moscow, mm -hmm. uh, these, these tech centers that the, the scientists and the mathematicians that are in those, the AI departments there are just phenomenal. I mean, I, I have to sometimes look in a mirror and see if I'm a human being walking into this place because it is so, <laughs> it is so out there, you yeah. know? And look, look, I'm, you know, for me, I, I stay out of politics. I mean, I, I certainly can't, you know, those people's problems aren't my problems. I'm just kind of a pure economist and kind of go where I need to go where people need me. So, you know, that's kind of how I have to handle things. Cool. I was going to ask them, Matthew, you were saying that you, you're back from Dubai and you're working with some devs out there. Are you working on a particular project or something? Well, I've caught, I've caught Matthew out. He's now scrabbling for the, the mute button. Or he's, he's, he's gone away. Never mind. Elena, did you come off mute, though? Are you going to ask something? Oh, yeah. Uh, what do you think is the future for a country, well, for any country that gets in a tricky situation, as John mentioned earlier, what do you think the outlook for future might be? I'd, I'd throw that to John. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. When the United States dropped two nuclear bombs and leveled a country in Japan, um, look where they are now. Look at Germany, a total arch enemy killing millions of people. Uh, look where we are now with them. So sure, mm -hmm. things right now don't look too good, but uh, I believe that we all going to need each other in the future. We have huge problems to solve, and it's better if we all sit down around a table and solve them all together instead of each other. And believe me, the, the world needs Russia very bad, very bad. And Russia needs the other part of the world very bad. So I'm very optimistic this year they'll be able to solve all of this stuff, and we can, get, you know, we can carry on with making the world a better place. I think that's it. And as, as John says, from what I've seen, you know, it, it's better for nations to trade um, and to undertake commerce than to fire weapons at each other because the only people who wins there are the, are the weapons makers. Uh, Absolutely. But, you know, Absolutely. I, I wanted to give Matthew another chance here. Matthew, have you managed to find the mute yet? <laughs> <laughs> apologies, apologies, Gary. You're dead right. I was scrambling. <laughs> uh, it's all right. I, I know that feeling. It, it's either that or you pop away for a minute to go and make a cup of coffee thinking I'll keep an ear out on this. And then suddenly the announcer says, and now over to. So, so, so anyway, I was saying, you were saying that you were in Dubai um, and you came back, it looks like from um, Qatar and everything. Are, are you working on a particular project you can talk about or is it just a general thing out there? There's so much to talk about as we move into the metaverse web tree and, and, and all of this space. Uh, we went down there for our dream convention where we've uh, pivoted all our other business uh, community into our NFT projects that have been hugely successful. Um, talk about the, making the world a better place. We've found a way 
to generate income weekly and monthly for workers the world over to pay their bills, their income, et cetera, et cetera. As we know, jobs no longer are keeping up with inflation. Uh, I'm passionate about workers' rights and uh, finding solutions uh, to those problems, which I talk about on LinkedIn a lot. Um, it's, it's slowly coming to the fore now that, pe- you know, AI, data analytics, the machine learning, robots, they're going to replace millions of jobs. I've just seen what was uh, somebody post there today, so many people let go from SAP or something like that. That's going to be the norm mm-hmm. in the next few years. Yeah. Yep. And workers the world over are going to have to conceptualize in their brains that the way to make a living is to transition over to their own empirical power in Web3. Now, as I move in that space, <clears throat> I only went to Dubai for a week. Um, and then I went over to the Emirates Towers. I was invited to the Emirates Towers with these guys who have developed um, NFTs for, I think, the soccer player Johnny Elvis or something. I think they went for 150 grand each. And okay. they've developed lots of different spaces and metaverse, et cetera, et cetera. And they've asked me to become a partner. Um, and a year or two ago, I wouldn't have been a developer. But now I have a team that wish for me to work with them yeah so this space is evolving rapidly as we know but my main drive is to make the world a better place by bringing mass adoption to the masses because as we all know the greatest transfer of wealth is happening right in front of us and if we allow the one percent just to be able to access that money yet again nothing's going to change is it yeah but it's one of those interesting things though because i keep hearing about how crypto and blockchain uh, brings access to the masses and, and I, I get nervous when i start hearing about oh this, this brings banking to the unbanked as a phrase because i, I kind of argue that the, the unbanked does not need banking um it, it needs the ability for payments it needs the ability to save money and transfer but the last thing in the world it needs is banking because that's debt, debt based in some way so if you've got something which is a different proposition, I think that's great. Well, accumulating your wealth in your own wallet, in your mm-hmm. own hard wallet, uh, it will, will secure the fact that nothing's going to happen like Sam Bankman Friedman, who just did the exact same as we have in the horrendous feed Ponzi scheme that is the particular monetary system that we have at the moment. Now, coming from Ireland, payment systems with Square and everything else, they're all aligning themselves with crypto, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Because there was the announcements, it must have been about six or eight weeks ago, I think it was with Square yeah. uh, around crypto payments. Yeah, so that, that came as a bit of a surprise to some people. But yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely on that. So are you working as an independent then, or are you part of a project team or something? I'm independent, so to speak. Affiliate with one company that was in a mass, massive, uh, I think you would probably call they brought multi-level marketing into the crypto world. They were the first to do it. Didn't need to promote the NFT, have a massive culture community behind them, which you need to be successful. Mm-hmm. Second project didn't need any, any razzmatazz or big players to promote it. Sold out in 15 minutes. It's all over wow. Instagram. Wow. So the next web, the next venture is going to be even, it's going to even, it's going to even trump that, but we're only beginning. It's only beginning. That sounds fantastic. And it's interesting as well. Ireland is quite a hotbed in this respect. Um, I've heard of a number of projects going on. I'm guessing, is, is your surname Kilkenny or is that where you are? No, it's a very rare Irish name. You've got mm-hmm. it in one. Yep. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have actually been to Kilkenny. Um, but I was kind of fascinated to, to have a name that's actually after that. Um, Elena, are you still in Ireland at the moment? Yeah. 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 So, and now so, I'm right. tried from Kilkenny. <laughs> Where are you, Elena? Uh, I am in South County Wicklow. You're kidding me. I'm the king of Bray. I'm from Bray, <laughs> County Wicklow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so isn't, isn't this great? You end up coming on a Zoom call where everyone assumes that they're all going to be in England or something. Um, and you actually find it's like, oh, I'm a neighbor. <laughs> I live in Bray. I live in Bray, but what's happening in Dubai I'm just back from Qatar. I'm in London now. I go to Atlanta on Tuesday. I meant to be going back to Bray, but I'm not because it's so exciting in Dubai. I'm heading down there on Friday. But I'll be hey. back in Bray. I'll be back in Bray. Yeah. There you go. You, you two should reach out to each other. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so the particular interest, uh, 
Matthew, we're talking about NFTs and that kind of thing. Is that your main area of interest then of um, providing access to NFTs or is it to use NFTs you know, for, for like payment systems and that? We have a trading academy, first and foremost, that we teach working people now. We, I'll ask you this question. Do you think a job is going to save a person or help people make a, pay the bills in the next decade? No. Simple yes or no. No. No, it's not going to, is it? No. Therefore, would, would, what, it, yeah. therefore, if there is a greatest transfer of wealth that history has ever known with the two administrations, Biden and Trump, how do we teach people to access? There's plenty of money in the world. How do we teach people to access that? We have to have an account. We have to teach them how to get on the blockchain or how to do uh, forex trading and then into the crypto space, which is super, super exciting. But we have mm. to protect them. We have to protect them. We have to show them how they can keep the payment systems. And that's all evolving as well. And that's going to need massive security in the cloud and everything else. And all these things are, listen, it's the Wild West, as we know. It's the Wild West. And we're all looking at ways to protect ourselves and see how we can advance together going forward. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's the thing that education, as you say, is absolutely critical on this. Um, and it's about ed educating on how to use things and how to do things and also some of the risks that are there. Big so, time. you know, I, I, I kind of get that absolutely. So is that something that you, you provide, like online education, that, that kind of thing? We give it free. You join our Discord. Are you? We're all familiar with Discord? Yeah. We, well, join, our, we join our Discord. On our Discord channel, we have a free decentralized web3 tv station you go on there you click on it you go back and do all the replays like what is an nft what is a payment system? what is this what is what and you just start your education within a community um that slowly brings you into exposure to this new world order that we're heading into oh, you know and uh, yeah free i mean what more can we say and what more can we do after that people be gaining confidence to then progress into possibly buying an NFT. You don't even have to invest in an NFT. But if they show people the NFT, a lot of people now who trust that community want to buy because they're giving, you can't officially say you're giving 10% interest because there's mm -hmm. no regulation from the SEC. So you say that we give airdrops of 10%. So most people have already had their investments back and now they're earning interest for the next four years. Yeah. When I say interest, they're able to pay their bills. I think that's a, a really interesting concept, definitely where it's worth. Uh, it's people, people. I, I'm going yeah. to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> so so what, what's the name of it, Pat, Patrick, so, uh, Matthew, so you can give it a quick name well, drop? Well, it. Well, I can give you the link. I'll send you the link. No problem. It's called Meta, Meta Bounty Hunters, where that is one project we've done that was built by Meta Labs. So we're in with Meta Labs as well. Okay. And uh, no, I'll have my, I have my own team in Dubai building, uh, doing our own stuff. But thereafter, you, you can't kind of get verified to get on white lists unless you have someone's referral link. And then you mm -hmm. get your referral link. And Lalina, you get your referral link. Mm -hmm. And off you go and spread it out in the universe. And uh, already we've, last month, we did the biggest toy charity giveaway in Los Angeles. I think it broke the Guinness Book of Records. And... Uh, Every quarter, we're like giving away $100,000 to charities that we choose from, from the DAO, from our community. Okay. That sounds good. So go on, sh shout it out again. And this, this is not financial recommendation or anything. No, but, no, no. We don't give that. Meta Bounty Hunters. Meta Bounty me, Hunters. Me, me, meta Bounty Hunters. And I noticed as well that um, your, your avatar or whatever um, on, Zo on Zoom at the moment is powered by iGo. Is, is that that's something a, different? <laughs> yeah, that's something different. I got it. I don't have to change that, but that's our travel company. Okay. We give away that for free, <laughs> and you get access to huge discounts. And when you when you register, we feed a child from our foundation. So far, I think we've hit twenty million children we fed. Wow. Well, that's uh, free. Uh, we our concept is we give away for free. We give value. Okay. We bring people into our ecosystem. And they begin to see how they can learn from all and begin to earn from all these different things that we are evolving into. Yeah. 
Excellent. So uh, uh, hopefully people can watch this afterwards and pick up on that, check, check in the details. That's uh, really useful, really interesting. Uh, thanks, Matthew. So j I just wanted to, um, j John, g come back to you again, really, um, in terms of you, you we, we've talked about Argentina, Lebanon, Russia. Um, are you finding any, any other equally active countries that are, are willing to e extend into crypto more? Yeah, Sri Lanka. So, you know, Sri Lanka has just an incredible bounty of goods there. I mean, I, I was shipping tuna, uh, you know, by Emirates straight off the coast there about uh, six years ago and shipping it right into San Francisco using Emirates, their cold supply chain. Mm -hmm. And just when the country was sinking, and the same thing with their cinnamon. I mean, it's just their spices there are unbelievable. Actually, it's known that when Buddha was sick, he actually went to Sri Lanka and got healed with Ayurvedic medicine way back in the day. So uh, that country is just incredibly bountiful for food, but their economy is, is horrific. I yep. mean, you saw they were just jumping up and down in the presidential palace. I mean, go figure. So, um, yeah, so... Again, it's just finding those networks of money lenders that will take crypto. I mean, money lenders are very true, very smart people. Generally, they're in the know. And uh, just send them the, um, you know, s send them whatever form of currency they want into their wallet. Um, give them a few days. The cash is there. They're trusted sources. And um, I can begin to ship things. Otherwise, good luck sending money through the banking system and you know all of that that all of that you know mess well it, it's really <laughs> i was gonna say it's interesting because sri lanka last year the, the government has actually set up a blockchain and crypto panel that um i provided some input into because sri lanka as, as you mentioned things like spices and that but they've also obviously got the tea but also they're a major gemstone um, yes. but center of excellence, really. And they've got some amazing markets there and they deal in gemstones, but they do actually have uh, quite a niche crypto stroke blockchain community around Colombo. So that, that's the capital. And I actually yes, did some, uh, and I actually did some stuff a while ago. I, I, I did a presentation with them to the blockchain and crypto government advisory panel that they set up. Um, just before the country went into absolute meltdown, as you say. So unfortunately, that didn't go anywhere. So may maybe I should have a conversation with my contacts and um, see, see what's going on with there. Because um, it, it's a, a, an amazing country um, and it's got so many resources and so much potential. It'd be good to see it develop again. Okay. I uh, totally agree. I mean, it's uh, they just... Um, you know, it's the, the government that unfortunately put them down the, the wrong path. Well, I think Sri Lanka is probably a great example about the, the law of unintended consequences. And when you do stuff that is in alignment with certain uh, COP principles about sustainability and not using pesticides and all this, which are all really, really noble ideas. They, they were effectively, if I remember correctly, going back to pretty much pure organic farming w with no additional help. But the problem is that meant that the farm yields collapsed. Um, and so they couldn't, they didn't have any crops to sell, which means they didn't have any revenue. The country's in an economic nightmare anyway. Um, and it just kind of compounded it. So, yeah, to, uh, a good point, John, definitely. Yeah, and, um, you know, there's, you know, there's, it looks like there'll be some other countries teetering on in Africa that uh, you got to look out for, too. I think Africa's an incredible opportunity. Um, you know, in my case, uh, I haven't spent too much time down there, but I'm really looking forward to it because, you um, the farming techniques, the stuff that's available in Africa is just incredible. Just mm -hmm. a huge opportunity. So I might kind of poke around down there. And it's one of those things as well, I know from some of my contacts, that certainly the likes of Ghana and Kenya and Nigeria as well from uh, are quite innovative in adoption of new things, You know, whether it's mobile banking, whether it's crypto. T 
typically they're not quite they're not quite as advanced as they might claim in terms of the adoption but that, that's okay that gives an opportunity but then you look at further down on the east side uh, around like tanzania and that kind of thing you've got um there's a major project down there world mobile token which is doing some incredible stuff um, and I'm hearing some really interesting stuff coming out, like South Africa and along the the south, the south and the east side of Africa seems to be very innovative. Whereas on the west side, it's a little bit quieter. So yeah, I, I think it's a uh, lot, lots of opportunities. If you hear of anything interesting, do, do come and share it um, with the group. Uh, look, uh, one of the reasons I'm going to uh, Davos is to speak with Chris Cleverly, who actually lives in London and runs the runs the holding company Tingo, and he launched Tingo um, throughout, uh, and Tingo Pay, which is millions, I believe it's up to 12 million people are using it, and um, he is, he's related to James Cleverly, the okay. Honorable James Cleverly, and so um, he, he's, he's right in your backyard, and, and what they have done are just phenomenal. I mean, they are, will be going public in the in the uh, Nasdaq this year in the United States. They've had years of audible uh, of um, um, audited finances. I mean, quarters and quarters of of real audited financials, and it's probably one of the best ship shaped companies I've seen in that space in food in Africa by far. Okay, it's tremendous opportunity. So de de definitely one to watch out for, uh, and it's, again, it's the it's the emerging markets which are fascinating. Which kind of it, it goes back to your point about Argentina. I remember uh, Andreas Antonopoulos coming out with a comment. I think it was about five years ago now, where he said, you know, even, even five years ago, he was talking about everyone's talking about the crypto winter. He said, "There's no crypto winter in South America. They're all getting into this space." Um, and, and there's lots of activity. Sorry, Elena, were you going to ask something then? I, I know she. May, um, may I just ask about the crypto and blockchain scene in Australia and New Zealand? Just at, at a random. <laughs> now that we are talking about countries. I, I, I certainly know some things that I, I can add to that, and I, I don't know whether Matthew and John are familiar with it. Australia, it's certainly growing rapidly. There's, re there's regulation coming into place, certainly around crypto, um, because I'm working with a, a couple of projects out there right now. Um, there's certainly a, a rapid growth. It's not as big as some other countries. There's certainly more people are getting wallets in Australia. The, the, the usage of wallet is, is growing. Um, but I think they're being relatively cautious co compared to how you're seeing adapted. That the likes of if you if you head over to Asia, if you go to the likes of Vietnam, um, particularly uh, Malaysia and South Korea, where the the Asian space is really into crypto, they're into gaming, and there, there's a big overlap between the two. And I think some of that is blending back towards Australia. Because Australia is often seen as a springboard into Asia, and that for some reason Westerners like to go to like Brisbane or whatever, and then use that in, into the Asian markets. So I'm seeing so, certainly some growth in Australia, New Zealand. I'm I'm not hearing so much on the crypto side of things, but Australia. Um, sorry, New Zealand's pretty small population, really. You know, split 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 across the two big islands. Um, I, I know some people who are in New Zealand who are into crypto, but it's relatively small. Um, you could always ask Kim, uh, uh, Kim, Kim.com. Kim.com is um, a, um, a person you'll find on Twitter who was one of the original kind of hacker type people, originally had a bit of a bad reputation. He's heavily into crypto. Ch check out Kim.com on Twitter. And I th believe he still lives in New Zealand, uh, disp despite being raided by the authorities at one point, which is w worth checking out on YouTube. Um, so, so there is a space there. I don't know, John, Matthew, any thoughts on Australia and New Zealand? Absolutely. I can assure you we're building an army. <laughs> we, I was with the crypto educators all from Australia in Prague in the summer all from 
all from Australia and New Zealand. What we have done for the Tongan Islanders down in New Zealand, you will be blown away. I will have to show you um, a recording of some of the stuff that we're doing and how they're empowering Islanders, people who couldn't even open a laptop computer, and now they're learning in this space and how to earn. It's incredible. From Hawaii, Tonga, New Zealand, there are incredible testimonials coming out of what we're doing down there. Awesome. I, I seem to remember as well, um, there's, there's a project uh, I remember in Papua New Guinea, uh, which is kind of in the, in the kind of region or whatever, um, which was a, a blockchain project to do with payments and that. And it was, it was out of um, a hackathon where uh, someone I know won a competition on that. So, th so there's definitely stuff going on there. Uh, Elena, sorry, did, did that give a perspective? Certainly, Matthew's saying there's a lot of stuff in Australia and New Zealand, but did, did that kind of answer the question on that? Yeah, yeah cool. Okay. So, so John, you, you're talking about Africa and that kind of thing. Um, do you have particular things in mind, or is it, as you say, that you're just going after the opportunities? Wherever they come no, up. I, I, I do. I, I definitely have certain things in mind in Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire, which they uh, make a lot of cashews there and actually a lot of cocoa. And there's a big demand for nuts coming because seeds and nuts, you know, are, are, are tremendously healthy for you. It's a biohack. It's, it's about you know, good longevity. And so as the planet is increasingly strained, it's harder and harder to find good sustainable um, groves and trees and things of that. You know, for instance, a cashew nut, it's, it comes out of an apple. So if you just think of a red apple, imagine the cashews on top of that red apple. It only mm -hmm. makes one. So think of all the millions and millions of apples that has to be grown to make one cashew. And that one cashew, there's no machine to peel back the three layers of membrane. So every single whole cashew you see is peeled back by hand. And sadly, it's exploited workers around the world. I'm not into that type of thing. That's people that know me and hear me speak. That's a, that's, well, we're not going anywhere. I see that happening. And so there are a few, that's why I'm in Brazil right now, uh, looking at some cashew farms, and then I'll be heading down now. You know, the big thing to come is agricultural finance, is mm -hmm. agricultural blockchain. That's the big one. And I'm not a tech guy. I don't go to conferences. I just do my thing. And I'm sure when that comes along, uh, that'll be a really huge opportunity. Uh, that's a good point. Uh, uh, are you familiar with um, AgriLedger? No. no. Okay, so, so if you want to reach out to me Sounds separately. Yeah, sure. so, 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 so AgriLedger is run by uh, a lady, uh, Jean-Via, I've forgotten her surname now, but I, I'd, I'd be happy to do an introduction. She set up a load of stuff to do with agricultural financing and traceability and everything. Um, out in Haiti, um, she, she's originally from Haiti, um, and yeah, she, she's been doing some great stuff on that. And she's one of the people. She's been in the space for many years. She, she's not one of these new people to come to it. So I'd be happy if you want to try and find me on LinkedIn. Uh, ju just Google Gary Nuttall Crypto okay. or Gary Nuttall um, LinkedIn. You, you'll find me on there. Just reach out to me. I'll be happy to connect you. And, right. you, and you know. To, it it, it's a pleasure. I, I, I've got to head out now, but I'll be back. I'll look for your information. What a pleasure. I appreciate your time. It's very interesting. Th th thanks for sharing the stuff you're up to, John. Have a great day, and we'll see you again. And as, right. as Bye for as, now. As, as John leaves, we've got um, Eric joining us from, I guess he's still in L.A., Eric? Yes. Hi, Gary. How are you? I'm sorry <laughs> to be late. I just woke up. <laughs> Good morning to you. That's not a problem at all. It's a great thing about this time of day. It just hits it right for some people who are going to bed and some people who are getting out of bed. So, yeah, uh, yeah, it I works was up out. until two in the morning. So, uh, from having woken up at six in the morning, so it was a really long day for me yesterday. 
Uh, that's, that's fair. And I, I hope your year is going well for you so far. It's, it sounds like you're busy anyway. Oh, you know, this this year is going to be a watershed for us, really. Uh, we've, we've worked really hard all of last year, and we've built a, uh, all the infrastructure that we've been dreaming of. And um, so now we're really well positioned for the for the comeback because that's what bitcoin will do of course is to come back mm -hmm. we'll, we'll certainly see on that i was commenting on another channel earlier on today Bit, 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 bitcoin seems to be channeling around the um just under seventeen thousand dollars right now and it'll, yeah. it'll be interesting to see what happens next with it yeah we've been trading sideways for really half the year right mm -hmm. um and uh it's it's accumulating momentum i mean i i hear just because of the you know the kind of contact that I have with the industry. Uh, I hear maybe more than more most people, and I and I hear accumulation. The, the right, you know, big people are accumulating. So yeah, and I'm I'm certainly hearing that though. there's a lot of there's a, a lot of movement off exchanges as well, which yeah. is kind of interesting because it could lead to liquidity issues, but I don't think it will. But a lot of people are actually beginning to use their own cold storage, their own self custody. Um, and as you say, they're consolidating some of their positions. So yeah, from finally, a, right? yeah, yeah. So uh, as you say, not before time. So that, that, that's kind of interesting. It, it's interesting as well because you, you're you're describing things in terms of holding crypto. Um, and we we had uh, John, who's just left us now. He spends all this time actually using crypto to pay for things, which, which is <laughs> what what it was originally intended for. Yeah, it was uh, peer peer to peer cash, right? Yeah, what, what, what's the phrase in the, the white paper? Uh, an electronic form of peer-to-peer -peer payment without an intermediary. Uh, yes. Yeah, and, and then everyone says, oh, no, no, if I get loads of it, I can make loads of money out of it. So that's good. So anything new, been, anything new you can share this week, Eric? Um, well, we're, um, we've got a, a number of initiatives that are, I think, very exciting. There's at least two things that... Um, I've completed um, protocol definitions for. So, and we're gonna be building this year. Uh, the first is, is uh, an authentication protocol. So you know how every website out there requires you to have a user ID uh, to differentiate users, right? But then you need a secret so that no one else can use somebody else's account. Mm -hmm. So if we just had a, if you just had your, your name, Gary, right, at some website, anyone could just log in with Gary if they knew your name, which is easy to know. Yeah. So you need a secret. But the problem is that now you have to transmit the secret, and the secret has to be stored on both sides. You have to store it because, frankly, you can't remember it because you can't have the same secret for all the websites, and we have so many accounts everywhere. Uh, and then you have to send it to them and they have to store it. Otherwise they don't know. Uh, no, right? no, no. <laughs> that, that's, that's why you use, that's why you use zero knowledge proof instead. Uh -huh. Well, mm -hmm. so what we're, um, what we're doing is we're creating a, um, a, an account less system. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, one of the problems that I, I think we've, we've, one of the things that I object to these approaches is that, that it really reveals information about you, right? Mm -hmm. So they, now they know your email address, right? Because they, they need to send you an email to verify that you are you, which is a, a valid um, necessity, a valid need. But at the same time, now they can trace you because now they can trace the email, yeah. right? So what we're doing is we're using a private key to sign a message that since you have the public and private key re relationship where you can hand out the, the public key to anyone, they don't mm -hmm. even know your email, right? And so we're using this in a, in a kind of a contactless method where whenever you go to the QR code, you scan it with your VAU app, with your VAU wallet, and then that website automatically gives you access, right? Okay. And so that website doesn't know who you are at all, uh, but they do know that you are you which mm -hmm. is really all they need to know. Yeah. Um, and you no longer need to have a, a series of passwords, which means that the website also doesn't have the password and therefore there are no security breaches possible, right? So we're implementing that first quarter of this year and the second protocol outlines a mechanism whereby 
if you lose your private key, you have a way to recover it in a way where the private key isn't available to anyone. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's also the that's also a big problem that we faced with crypto because everyone's approach has been well look you should generate your private key and then store it store it somewhere right and there's really no guidance given as to how to store it so yeah. what happens is people write it down on a piece of paper and they put it in a book right and anyone who who finds it can read it and go oh this looks like a private key and they can take your funds or the book burns or it got thrown away. It was like, what you threw, my right? Mm -hmm. And then when you, when you actually need it, you go look for it and it's not there. So there's all of this stuff where people then have to print multiple copies of the key and cut it in slices and keep multiple slices in multiple places. And how do they put it back together when they need it? It's a mess. And really multi-party computation doesn't solve that because <sighs> multi-party computation does away with the private key but you still have the same basic issue. How do we know who is need, needing access to this, right? So you mm -hmm. go back to biometrics or you go to these situations which are really frankly worse, right? So we, 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 we should... have a, a, a mechanism that we've ideated that actually makes perfect sense. Um, it's basically a social, a social web structure that mm -hmm. is designed for recovering your keys. And we're going to be rolling that out this this uh, probably this first quarter as well. We should have a chat a chat separately about that because the, one of the companies I'm working with, we're using a mixture of uh, Shamir secret sharing plus multi factor plus multi sig plus as you say um, um, multi uh, factor computation as well. And uh -huh. again. So, so it's a company I'm working with on the West Coast called LockBlock. Uh, okay, if you'd like, know. if you'd like me to set up a conversation directly, um, I'm sure I'm sure they'd be happy to engage because we're we're about to go live with a digital asset custody solution, okay. which uh, allows a f kind of sharded parts of a key, but it's actually not even part of a key; it's part of a secret to give you a key, which is even okay. better. So it means you don't have any form of custody, uh, which is yeah. very very attractive to people. So yeah, we we, we should set up a separate conversation because most people either listening now or watching the recording afterwards will go Shamir zero knowledge pool too many yeah. confusing it's things typing. Yep, it, it, it gets, but but in the end, it's all about um, ha having access to secrets that you re can recover without too much trouble which is part of the problem. It's all about making these things easier to use. So that's yeah. good. Excellent. Well, th thanks for sharing that, Eric. That's really good. And Matthew, re really interesting to hear the, the education type, type stuff doing. We, we've got about five minutes left before we finish off today because I'll, I'll try and finish on the hour. I just wanted to open it up to anybody. Do they, do they have any questions or anything that they'd like to share in particular in the last few minutes? I, I totally agree there with Eric on um, the key, the custody key, and, you know, like MetaMask, it's a nightmare. Even Raul Paul and everybody else says that. No, no more. Yeah. Sorry, well, I've got to, I've, listen, guys, I've got to go on a global training now at 8 o'clock. It's been very, very interesting. Really enjoyed it. And uh, till next time, I've got to sign out. Yeah? Well, Matthew, you come again. Thanks for joining us. Okay, take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. So there you go, uh, Elena and Eric, we've got a few minutes left. A any, anything that's hitting the, the things that we, we can cover off in the last few minutes? Uh, at the last session, uh, the session a week ago on the 1st of January, I listened to it and the conversation uh, did evolve about your project, Gary, that you're working on and that you just mentioned. So. Yeah. And when is there going to be any more news about it? <laughs> okay, so th th this is kind of a project that's in, in stealth at the moment, and it, it, there's, there's multiple facets to it. So the main one we're about to go live with is a digital uh, custodial solution. So this is thinking about recovering your seed phrase, recovering your private key, and also thinking about it in terms of um, if you die, how do you pass on your assets, this kind of thing. 
We're about to soft launch that in the next two weeks where we're looking for early adopters who just want to try it out. So that'll involve you um, having your own wallet, setting up, uh, as Eric was describing really, what we call guardians. So guardians are people who are like your friends and family, or it might be your lawyer or whatever, um, and they become part of a signing scheme. So we use a thing called threshold signatures, um, and we're, we're going to be setting this up. I'm just doing some testing on that literally this week. We're going to be launching that for a few people who are interested in the next couple of weeks, uh, where we want to use test it out for usability, functionality. We're going to get some people to try and hack it to see if they can break it, this kind of thing. Um, and then we're going to go in for a firm launch, probably the end of Q1, beginning Q2. So probably March, April, it'll go public. But if anyone who's on YouTube or is watching this or whatever wants to reach out and wants more details, get in, get in touch with me. Um, if you want to find me somehow, just go Google Gary Nuttall Emerging Technology or Gary Nuttall Crypto, and I usually appear, fill up the first page, just wrap, reach out to me. Uh, so, Lena, yeah, it's um, the, the next two weeks we're going to have a product that we're going to start soft launch and testing with, and then we're going to start hardening it, putting in place We've got a lot of good security around it already. We're going to be building that up in the next few weeks. Okay. Uh, and Eric, that's where it's going to be interesting to have a uh, compare and contrast to the solution that you're about to go live with as well, which is one of the things I love about the crypto space. I can have sensible conversations with people who are developing very similar things and no one minds talking to each other. You know, yeah. If we were all bankers, we'd be all, oh, sorry, I can't tell you about this. <laughs> it's all under NDA, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, we're very open in this space. Yeah. So, so that'd be good. So, yeah, ha happy to have a further conversation on that. So if, the, if yeah, there's you not... Know, th threshold signatures is really, the, is really a, the key technology here. I've been looking at, uh, at TSS. You know, there's an implementation of it on Tendermint. Yep. Um, and uh, I've, I've looked at that implementation for maybe a year and a half with Envious Ice looking to build on it. I just don't have, I haven't had the time. But um, when I was thinking about the problem of decentralization of secrets, it mm -hmm. seemed to me that TSS was the, was the thing. And there is actually a whole network uh, now built called the Secret Network, which is, which is the first blockchain where you can actually store secrets. Okay. So, so this is a this is a really big deal, and really very few people know about it at this point. It's a secret <laughs> because Sorry. it's the, the the thing is like um, if I want to have you know if if I want to trans uh, transfer value from one blockchain to the other, it's possible, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we do it today, but we do it in a centralized way where an exchange has uh, uh, private keys on both blockchains. And they know how to trade with both blockchains and they do the trade for you. Um, but, you know, then, then it's centralized and then it, anything that is centralized is problematic, right? It's, it's subject to, to corruption, to force, to theft, to all kinds yep. of stuff. So how do we do it in a, in a decentralized fashion? And the answer is, well, we have these things called smart contracts. We mm -hmm. can trust them because it's just code, right? But the problem is that the code lives in a given blockchain and it really has no way of interacting with other blockchains. So you say, okay, but there's oracles. And yes, it's true. Uh, you, can, you can use oracle technology, but again, the problem is if I want to sign a, a transaction on a different blockchain, I don't have any way of storing the keys because mm -hmm. everything that is stored in all the blockchains is public knowledge. So you need a way to keep secrets. And that's what that's what TSS allows is it allows you to. So, so we, we should definitely have a separate conversation because one of the things we're using is threshold signature schemes um, linked in with things like we also use zero knowledge proof. And for the, the platform we've developed as well, we're also using zero trust network. 
So mm -hmm. you think about uh, VPN on speed kind of thing. So mm -hmm. de def definitely sounds like we've got some commonality. We can catch up on separately on that. Folks, uh, we're at the witching hour. I'm afraid it's time to finish off for the week. And that, that got really interesting towards the end as well. So thank you very much, both of you, for coming along. And thank you, anyone who's watching. Hope you find it of interest. Hope to see you all again. And Likewise. Yes. <laughs> bye, bye, Have bye a for now. Week. Bye, <laughs> bye. bye now. So I hope everyone found that of interest. Real, real mixture of things covered that in terms of uh, using crypto for actual payments as opposed to just holding it in some way and trading it and a whole range of things around education um, and learning about things like smart contracts and NFTs, looking at how NFTs are being used as well. So I hope you enjoyed this. Do click on the subscribe, do like it, do make comments. Even better, come to a future session and have a great day.